Hey, welcome back. It is Wednesday, the 9th of August, 2023. Later in the afternoon, finally getting started on uh, prepping to build the leading edge and to attach the main skin. So today's mostly gonna be kind of housekeeping work, just getting all of those surfaces prepped for priming. Uh, and then the other big task that I have to do is a bajillion countersinks on the main spar. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on today. Not the countersinking, but just uh, prepping surfaces to be primed. A little update on where I stand with the, uh, the fuel tanks and the leak repair. Uh, I have done enough research at this point to determine that for me at least, using negative pressure, trying to draw sealant into those leaks is not going to be a viable long-term solution. Uh, from what I've learned so far from a number of sources, people seem to widely agree that it's just not a good permanent solution to a leak. So you got to repair it from the inside and um, the two uh, leaks, one in each tank that are at the corner of the baffle are really easy to get to by removing the access plate. However, the ones that are on the rear baffle and the top um, skin, um, they're in the second bay and those will not be accessible by removing the access plate. There's the wing ribs have a small lightning hole, not big enough to get a person's hand through to reach into that second bay. So I will have to make a cut in the back baffle to do that. So <clears throat> that's info only. I'm not going to do that today. I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, that's the way it's going to have to happen. Uh, so when we get to that point, uh, obviously we'll kind of do a special on just that process of opening up the rear baffle. Anyways, uh, enough jibber jabber. Let's just get into the regular routine business of building an airplane as one does. So here we go. The normal business of building an airplane. Um, what I'm doing right here, while those skins and leading edges were uh, fitting, fitted on the wings, there was a lot of work that happened in there. Uh, Matt drilling some holes for some ribs and other things, which meant there were a lot of little metal shavings everywhere just dying to be sucked up uh, with a vacuum uh, so that's how i'm starting it off um and then the normal business so we're going to get into just doing the stuff that we've done a hundred times before um prepping uh skins to be uh finally riveted edge finishing deburring uh a little bit of priming uh, on the skins um I'm not priming the entirety of the inside of the skin. I'm only uh, priming the basically the rivet lines, the mating surfaces. Uh, so he saw me there. I had that a bending brake on there. Um, <laughs> I haven't used it in forever. I just had it there for uh, the tools video. Um, if you went back and looked at that. Uh, anyway, so using the Vixen file to clean up the long edges. Um, and removing the blue, which I should have done a long time ago, to be honest, um, it is invariable that in this climate, along the edges of uh, that blue vinyl, you'll get a little bit of corrosion. Um, the, on the exterior of it, all of that's going to get cleaned up and go away when this eventually goes to paint. So it's not... Um, it's sort of stopped in its tracks at this moment. So I use a Vixen file um, to do sort of the rough cleaning up of those edges. They have these little bumps every few inches, probably where they were punched from the, the sheet of material. And then I use a smaller, finer um, a file from a, uh, I'll put a link to it in the description, um, a set for uh, chainsaws. Um, that works really well at cleaning up the roughness left from that Vixen file and, and gets a really nice edge on it. It's, it's work, but it's not really too much work. And then I have a, um, an edge finishing tool that's like a little V that you can drag along the edges. So it all came out uh, pretty well. What, I'm, what you see me doing here is deburring all of those holes, um, all of the rivet holes on this piece on the exterior. Um, 
of the skin, to be honest, it really doesn't need it. These are really clean holes. They've all been uh, reamed. Um, but I guess just as being diligent in my work, the interior, you will not see me deburring those holes because I'm going to come through in a little bit with a Scotch-Brite pad and scuff all of that stuff up. So any tiny burrs that, that might happen to be on there. And again, uh, after the reamer, these are just clean holes. Uh, but if there were anything there, the Scotch-Brite pad would take that off. Okay. When you go to Costco uh, and you see that their, um, their nitrile gloves are on sale, yes, be excited and grab them, but also check the size. I have a box of basically worthless gloves. <laughs> My hands are not small enough for these uh, size medium gloves. So anyways, yeah, that was a, a struggle. Um, I thought about masking. You saw me with the paper there. I thought about masking the rivet lines, and I'm like, is this really? No, it's not worth it. Uh, so I've moved on to the second skin here. Uh, so, yeah, this is pretty uh, straightforward what's going on here. Um, the plan for today will be to get the same work done to all the leading edge ribs. And I think... I think these leading edge ribs are clean. They're not like those the the tank ribs that I had that had um, all that weird discoloration from the forming process. Um, they were not. These um, leading edge ribs are not hydroformed. They're very clean. Um, they're not all scuffed and scratched up. So I think that I'm probably only going to do uh, uh, prime the mating surfaces similar to what I'm doing with the skin there, um, not trying to um, spark a new chapter in Primer Wars. Everybody's got their way of doing it. Um, and I am of the opinion that it's probably not even really necessary for, uh, for as long as this airplane is going to be flying, but why not? I got a ton of, uh, I got a ton of Primer. So I might as well use it. So that's the work that I'm going to get after today. Um, in the beginning of the video, talking about the leak situation, um, I've got to order a couple of um, those blank uh, access plates, like the one that I put on the left wing. Um, those are what are going to go in the place of the big hole that I'm going to put in the, in the rear baffle of the tank so I can get into that second bay and make the uh, necessary leak repairs. Um, I would imagine that, you know, uh, someday when I'm old and more gray, um, at that point I'll probably have one of those access plates at the back of every, uh, every bay in the baffle, uh, chasing down leaks over time. Um, I, I feel pretty certain that these are not the last leaks that I will ever have to deal with in fuel tanks, just by observing the experiences of, of others. But, uh, so I won't do anything on those tanks for a few days. I think I'm just gonna stick with uh, getting the leading edges built here. Uh, the sequence from here is to get the leading edges built, Clico the main skins on, um, see, get the, get the edges built, um, all of those uh, ribs, the main ribs, they need to be uh, dimpled, um, at least the top side. I won't, I won't dimple the bottom side of those uh, skins yet, or those ribs yet, because I'm gonna wait until the bottom skins have been fitted and final size drilled before I do any dimpling. So I'll go through with the squeezer, dimple the tops of all of those ribs. I will do all the countersinking, um, the remainder of the countersinking on the, the flanges of the main spar. And then these parts right here, uh, these skins and the ribs that I'll be working on today, those of course have to be dimpled as well because we want the plane to be smooth and fast. Uh, so it, mechanically, it doesn't look like a lot of work. You just, you know, put it together and rivet it. It's very straightforward. It's not a lot of little uh, odds and ends and bits and pieces like there are with the tanks or, um, you know, even doing the tie downs and stuff like that. But there are just a lot of sort of tedious but absolutely necessary operations and so it will still take a good amount of time to get this portion of the build done but when it's done that this will mean that the leading edges are built and permanently affixed and the top skins will be 
permanently affixed and um, the wings will be, or rather the fuel tanks will be temporarily installed um, just to keep everything square when that process is going on and then they'll, you know, they'll come off and we'll get into doing the leak repairs. So that's it for this one. Today we'll work on the ribs. Thanks for being here.